What's in Vulcan, guys? Here we have um, Tony from our locals, and he's going to present to us an Unchained deck profile. So I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to this new archetype. It's one of the most expensive archetypes to be released in a while. And so we're just going to see his take on it and to see you know, if you guys can take any ideas from his deck profile. All right, take it away. Okay, so um, Invoked was built to like, I, I, not Invoked, um, Unchained, when I first came out, I, I looked a few deck lists online, 80% of them were just true Draco ones. And then there was like the odd one that played artifacts. And I messed around with the builds, but I ended up realizing that, well, especially with all those engines, they ended up just becoming the less of the two sums together. You either had true Draco, which was probably off just doing true Draco things, or you had artifacts, which arguably wasn't even a deck, and this only it was more bricky at the time than it was actually good. So I started messing around with a more pure variant of the deck. It tries to abuse more of the traps itself, but also tries to continuously, I guess, um, recur as hard as it can. And once it gets to that mid-game range where it's comfortable and starts burning its own resources, uh, that's when you win. So to begin off, uh, I'm playing three Unchained Soul of disa um, Disaster. A lot of people only play two, and that's fully fair. Um, I find I actually do end up burning these, uh, like burning through these from my deck a lot. If I draw into them, it's pretty bad because that's just one less copy in my uh, deck to grab from. And a lot of times, um, I do enjoy being able to actually summon it from deck to get the effect off. What it does is that while it's on the field, it has two effects. The first effect is it could, you can target one special summon monster your opponent controls and using it and that monster to link away to summon another uh, monster from a dark link monster from your extra deck. Uh, and there's a lot of, the texture is all dark at this point, so there's a lot of options. The other effect is if it's destroyed um, by battle or card effect, you can special summon an unchained from your graveyard. And this effect you end up abusing a lot more than I, I thought I would, because of the amount of times you end up just blowing it up or bringing it back to blow up so you conserve resources on your end. Uh, moving on, we have three of the, both of the unchained twins, unchained twin Aruha and unchained twin uh, Rakia. Uh, both of them have very similar effects. They have one effect that if it's destroyed by battle card effect, you can special summon one unchained monster from your deck or your hand. And a lot of times you'll be you'll sometimes have to actually normal summon and crash this to get this monster out. But more than anything, they all have an additional effect to blow up something on the field. Um, Aruha, while it's in your hand, you can special summon it by blowing up one card you control. Rakia has a quick effect that lets you blow up one card on the field, but you can't summon any more fiends for both these. And you'll be using them at times to consistently just trigger off your uh, remainder um, unchained monster uh, spell and trap effects. And at times, also the disaster. Uh, this is where I think you see certain builds playing. Um, you'll see three, uh, Lilith, Lady of Lament. So this card I actually thought I was messing around with, and I realized it's actually really strong in this deck. For one, you can tribute it or any dark monster to set, uh, to reveal three traps and set them, as long as they're normal traps. What is actually a thing is that usually when you set something with Lady Element, you don't get to use it that turn. However, because all the Unchained traps have the ability to float, you can actually set something to blow it up immediately to get that float effect off. Um, it gets you all the traps you need, which is very important in this deck because they are your recursion. Um, and at times, it's just a beater when you need it. Have you thought of playing perhaps the Lair feel spell with this? Uh, I tried playing Lair, but the problem is that this was the only card that actually right. made use of tributing, which meant that if I open Lair and not something else, it, was, it wasn't going to be helpful. Uh, the other two monsters you play, and this is the ones I think a lot of people will find interesting, is the two Dark Spirits uh, from the Immortal uh, Destiny decks, uh, Booster Pack. So each of them have a very unique effect. Uh, this one will trigger when your opponent activates a card or effect, and this one will trigger when your opponent declares an attack. You can discard these from your hand, and then special summon one level 8 fiend from your graveyard, and then from there it will do two things. When you discard banishment on the, uh, in the start of the damage step when your attack is declared, you can discard it, summon the level 8 fiend, and then immediately it proceeds to damage calculation with these two monsters. So the, the battle will proceed to go on with your disaster. Mind you, while the effects of the monster summoned by the spirit is negated, uh, disaster has 3,000 defense, which means a lot of times if you're attacking with this, it serves as a redirected chump blocker that when it dies, it ends up floating. Malice, on the other hand, is much faster considering that it triggers off of any monster, uh, opponent action, and but it and it summons itself back, but it's mostly used more to, um, to actually have it on your main phase. This one's more for battle phase. This one I use to protect my link monsters, and this one I use more to be aggressive. Likewise, however, the, the nice part about these is that when a level 8 fiend is sent to the graveyard, except for the damage step, so if it's run over by battle, you cannot, you can't trigger it. But when it's run over, um, but it's sent to the graveyard, except for the damage step, you can add these back to your hand. 
So is there a reason you're only playing one and one? Well, again, since you can add them back, right? You didn't right. need to play more. Having more really doesn't do anything considering you can only use the effects yeah. once per turn. And more than anything, um, given the fact that you actually can link away your opponent's monsters, but you constantly link away with this, you're even when you these are in your graveyard, you'll constantly be adding them back. And you only need one to just for that immediate use. Uh, but like I like these because at times it, this was how I continuously gr out grinded decks like Salomon Gray because then no matter how much they try to recur, I could recur back my Reborn over and over again, and that allowed me to do a lot of uh, continued plays when. It came down to it. We play one tour guide because, as it turns out, everything in this deck is a level three fiend, even these. So you have a lot of targets. You could summon this to blow it up at some point if you wanted to. You could summon the lady because 2k attack is not bad. Or you can even summon these and then get them into the grave immediately so that you can set up for the uh, for the looping of that those cards. We also play, and this is something I was I'm try I was trying out today. Three Chronograph Sorcerer and one Time Gazer. So this card turned out to be deceptively useful in this deck. Time Gazer is a level three, and this becomes relevant because one of my extra deck monsters can be used as level three. So it's another level three on board to have me set up. But Chronograph itself is actually really strong for a number of reasons. Um, on one, if it's in, if you activate it early, you do get the extra monster. But if, since you're popping your own cards, you can also special chronograph and get dead cards like your Unchained Soul Disaster out of your hand a lot easier. And that puts a lot of damage on board. It also can special summon uh, Lilith at full 2k attack so that you can apply a bit of pressure. Um, at the same time, once you start making your Link 4 monster, it also starts as an enabler to trigger its effects. So, it's, and, uh, and because it can be used as a spell, you can also use it as a way to drop, um, to pop, uh, to drop some of your, uh, chained Aruha by popping it itself if you really had to. And because it's an extra monster, it means that I can do links that way. Uh, three, Ash. Honestly, should, I, I probably would play Nibiru. Nibiru actually and uh, it probably is a little better purely because it gives a token that is a special summon monster for you to take with your disaster. Um, but Ash comes in handy at times. Uh, so that's the monster lineup. Uh, onto the spell and traps. How many monsters in total? I think it was. Uh, I actually have no idea at this point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22. This is a 40. Two or 43 card deck when I last left them at. Next up, we have three un uh, Abominations Prison. This is your Searcher. Um, it searches for you any Unchained card, so it's consistency for everything. Uh, but at the same time, if it's destroyed while it's set, you can special summon an Unchained monster from your deck. And that's sometimes more useful uh, than actually searching. You have two Wailing of the Unchained uh, Soul. So it, the first effect is while it's face up on the field and you link summon an Unchained monster. You, will, you can target one card on the field and pop it. And this is, it's good for aggression. But like the Unchained Abomination, if it's set and destroyed, you can special summon an Unchained from your deck. And that's mostly why you're playing this. It's not the greatest card. You're mostly using it because it's a good way to tr uh, special summon that you that essentially can sometimes become aggression. We only have two Call by the Grave. I uh, thought about playing three, but there's a lot of times this deck just doesn't have a lot of reason to Call by the Grave. They can stop you when you're trying to summon your Unchained uh, Soul Disaster from the deck, but a lot of times that actually doesn't... I, I end up just crashing my monsters and that they can't even ask me then there anyway. So wait, so what hand trap hurts this deck the most? Uh, Let's see. It, like, a lot of stuff, like, Impermanence only hits hurts me when I try to summon Tour Guide. Um, Ash can hurt. But aside from that, like this is it's a pretty hand trap resilient deck. You don't summon enough monsters to get into Beerud. Uh Ash at worst is only on this, but it doesn't considering a lot of times you hide so many traps, you end up getting into this anyway. Um and like I guess impermanence at worst, it's just mostly impermanence at times. Because then getting this impermed when you're trying to resolve the effect does kinda suck. Uh we play three uh, for the traps. We play three escape and um, three uh, chamber. Escape is kind of like a mini scrap dragon effect. You target one of your unchained monsters, you target one of your own, uh, one of your opponent's mo cards, and you both blow them up. And uh, Chamber is more kind of like a Call the Haunted esque or a Back to the Front kind of card where you can special summon one unchained monster from your hand or graveyard. And this is a way to, this is one of those ways you can get your uh, like bricky disasters out of your hand, but it's also a way to, you can also reborn the links and do disruption that way. This card is good just because it lets you it, it lets you trigger off the destruction effects of your main deck monsters while also getting removal on board. And like all the other unchained cards, if they're destroyed while they are set, they will summon an unchained monster from the deck. 
So in, whether it's live or dead, you can always use these effects one way or another to get uh, get you get your play started. Have you found three of each to be bricky ever? Uh, no. Well, part of the reason you play three is because of the um, Lilith. Mm -hmm. But I the only time it was like this one I find is the more bricky one, just because sometimes you don't actually have an unchained monster, so you can't. And when you don't have an unchained monster, you can't pop it either, so you can't get it second effect off. But I found that like having these. Um, continue the like longevity of the deck. This one ultimately became more useful just because sometimes when I summon the uh, disaster off of something like my Malice, right? Its effects are negated, but that doesn't mean I can't pop it to pop one of my own's card, summon back my Link 2, and then proceed to do further disruption. So it, it's essential at 3, uh, and I, find, I found it did really well at 3. And that's mostly the Unchained stuff. Moving on, we then have two back to the front. Uh, you can, it's, it brings back your Lilith, it brings back, it's also defensive options, because you can bring back this in 3k defense, you can bring back your uh, twins and get floating as well. It wasn't bad. Uh, three permanents, because that's the other hand trap I played. That one was more effective than in my opinion. And then we play two Trap Trick. Trap Trick is, uh, it tutors everything in deck, so you might as well. Again, like Lilith, if you set it, you can immediately pop it to get the effect. Uh, on that turn, but this one actually puts them live as well. So at times when you open things like one but not the other, but you know you can have plays with both, you can now get both this way. It's just another, it's a, you could say it's another, it's a fifth and sixth option for your traps. Have you thought about playing perhaps, you know, other pure traps, Compulse, Torrential Tribute, etc.? Well, the, the, I honestly thought, initially I thought about playing Torrential, because it will trigger mm -hmm. my things. Compulse, unfortunately I can't be, have. I don't have that dual usage, but um, a lot of times, like, I'm mostly only setting escapes or up chambers. At times, because this is also the reason I play two back at the front, I don't right. need it all the time, but I can banish one to get the other one and right. continue my plays. Um, but I, at best, I might, I thought about adding in the artifact engine if it didn't just brick so much all the time. Alright, so that's the main deck here. Did you said 42 cards? Uh, 42 or 43 cards at the time. I think, uh, I may have, I may be adding, I may have added an additional one with the time gazer. So is that... So considering your main deck, is there anything you would change? Uh, things that change. Uh, well, one, the Nibiru. I think it's Nibiru or Kaijus were a little better than the Ash, in my opinion. Going second, it gets rid of the the main key monster that you can then link away with Disaster. Um, I might, I kind of want to cut down Wailing to one, but it, it became a problem. And I might, I'm still messing around with it, but I'm like, the Chronograph Sorcerer engine might change to something else. But the rest of the deck ended up being, I guess, pretty, pretty efficient, uh, robust on its own. All right, I guess moving on to the extra deck then? Yes. So for extra deck, you just have a bunch of links and one exceeds, uh, and then everything else at this point is pretty much just uh, super probably targets for the side. You play the one uh, we witch because it's a dark that adds back. It's a dark that pumps your unchained monsters, but adds back more darks. Um, you play the two unchained soul of rage. Uh, this is the more powerful one to some people, but I'd argue it's also probably the most vulnerable. So while it's on the field, during your opponent's main phase, you can target one monster, especially on monster your opponent controls. After this effect involves, link away, link summon using this and that targeted monster. And it's a, it's a great card of form disruption since it gets around every pretty much disruption or such. So against something like Salmon Grade, having this on board, the minute they make that fire, um, that sunlight wolf you're taking it or the minute they um and this is a, it's a, it becomes a common point where they'll try to summon a um they'll try to summon uh mirage Talio to make the sunlight wolf to try to bounce this and then i just take away the sunlight wolf uh, alongside it to make something like a link four or link three <clears throat> there's obviously a few problems with it it being a 1800 attack means it's pretty easy to be run over by battle but that's what the banishment dark spirit kind of mitigates by redirecting the attack likewise um it gets imper if it gets impermed, it's kind of dead. But the second fact is also pretty good. The second fact is, if it's destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add one fiend monster from your graveyard to your hand, which means you can add back Lilith if you've already resolved it. You can add back your fiends, but you can also add back your dark spirits and even tour guide. I've actually bounced back tour guide once and just normal some tour guide and kept going again. And the reason why tour guide is kind of important is because I also play one Cherubim. So this deck is all level threes, which means it's not hard to summon this. But the fact is, um, when I summon it, it has two benefits. One, the double arrow pointings that protect uh, the, the things that points you cannot be destroyed by card effects, which becomes uh, very useful because sometimes I've actually I do a lot of topo logic plays with this deck, uh, and it will protect the monsters under it from being topo logic, including the topo logic I end up summoning here. Also, it can dump a level three, which means a lot of times I can end up dumping my dark spirits to the graveyard, and that gets me my uh, setup for that. 
Uh, it's very common for me to go some have this and this on board, dump the level three, and then link these away to make the link two, and immediately add back the dark spirit that I dumped. So, especially with tour guide, for example, I can normal the tour guide, summon one of the dark spirits, link away to summon Cherubini to dump the other dark spirit, and then when I eventually send my dark soul of disaster to the graveyard, I'm now able to grab back both dark spirits for the play. Uh, and then lastly, we have one Galatea. If you're playing against Orcus, you can link away your opponent's Orcus monster, summon Galatea, which obviously then gives you sometimes irrelevant access to Dingirsu here. You can also overlay two Unchained Soul Disasters for Dingirsu. I've done it actually more than I thought I would, because it is just kind of a big, uh, it, it lets you send a monster, and then when these get detached, they eventually inevitably add back your Dark Spirit. So it's an option, and it, it, it serves as a relevant protection against uh, your opponent. Moving on, we have Link 3s. We have the one, uh, Berserker of the Tenny. It requires one Link monster at minimum, and then whatever else. And, well, you can see, given this, that if I'm linking away using my Unchained Soul, I'm always going to be able to summon this. It's just for the damage, because sometimes summoning of the other options are the greatest, but it's it's usually the last, last okay, so line of defense. So why Berserker exactly? Because it gives your opponent two extra deck arrows, does it not? It gives you two more extra deck arrows, but at times, um, I'm actually summoning this while... Uh, I'm actually summoning this to the main monster zone. Mm -hmm. So it gives you just 3k uh, oh, okay. attack to run over. Got it. Um, it's just the one that, it's just that the other ones, the law of link 3s just don't have a lot of attack. I could summon Deco Talker, but it really doesn't do much. Right. And this one just, it, it becomes a vanilla beater that your opponent may not be able to answer because it's 3,000 attack. But likewise, the other one I play is one Nightmare Unicorn. You know, if you, since you're link summoning on your opponent's turn, you can obviously disrupt further by summoning this and discarding a card. But card economy in this deck is really hard. Like 80% of the time, most of your card economy is just having one your one draw and then having the Dark Spirits in your hand and you don't want to pitch them. So you only make this more than as a last minute precaution. More than likely, however, you'll just be making the other Unchained Link 3, uh, the Unchained Soul of Anguish. It's very similar to the Unchained Soul of Rage, but I sometimes think it's better than the Unchained Soul of Rage. For one, it has it has a not, uh, it isn't a quick effect, but it lets you target any monster opponent controls to link away with it, which means you could take away things that aren't necessarily um, special summon monsters. It has 2400 attack, so it lives a little longer, but it then lets you climb to bigger things. And you often at times will, um, if you're going second, make your ch use the Cherubini and the Unchained Soul monster to make this, and this will then lead you into your link four and so on. Its effect, uh, it has the same effect as Unchained Solar Rage, where if it's destroyed, you can add back a Fiend. So a lot of times it is good recursion, but you just need to do. And then finally, for the Link 4s, you have one Unchained Abomination and one Topologic Bomber Dragon. These I use quite a fair bit. For one, this card has the effect where um, pretty much if your opponent lives and breathes destruction, this will keep destroying things. If a monster is destroyed by battle, it will pop a card. If, it, a card is destroyed by, if a card is destroyed by card effect, it will destroy a card. At the end phase, it will also destroy a card. So you can, summoning this um, can just lead to a lot of uh, board clearing. Topologic, on the hand, is much more useful for the sake of disruption. Considering that um, you can use your Dark Spirits or just have um, floating floating based off of your um, based off of your uh, twins, it's very easy to trigger Topologic multiple times and still float into more monsters to trigger Topologic uh, again. Uh, this is where the Dark Spirit of Malice is more relevant, where I can go, my opponent does pretty much anything, and I'll go pitch my Malice to summon my um, Disaster to Zone that Topologic wants to do. Topological trigger nuking your board, but since a lot of times I made Topologic using my Link 2, I can summon back the Link 2 to an, a zone it doesn't point to. Now my opponent can keep, if my opponent keeps making, I can link away that monster as well to summon, let's say, the Link 3 or a Wee Witch, and then Topological will trigger a third time nuking the board, and then this will add me back something from my graveyard. And I can continuously loop this because once this went to the graveyard by disruption, this Malice is in my hand for me to keep doing this pretty much every turn over and over again. And the fact that he can burn damage means that he is sufficient to end the game um, al alone by this. So that, with that kind of disruption on board, you kind of you definitely enjoy that. Likewise, if you have something like the Chair Beanie, you can end up with a configuration like this where you can summon monsters to this zone like the Link 2. It will nuke the board, but these won't get destroyed because of Chair Beanie. And then when you link away again to summon, let's say, the Link 3, it can't be destroyed and Tovlogic will keep nuking the board over and over again. And this is actually a lot, a very common configuration given to given the number of Link 2s or Link 3s your opponent plays. I've taken away a Heat Leo to summon this while this is on the board, and then this just continuously fed my uh, win condition. And uh, yeah, that's 
that's pretty much the deck. It's a very grindy base deck. So you, what would you say? Was it a control type deck, aggressive, combo? What does uh, it fall into? It's, it's, it's a bit of everything, but mostly it's a control based deck. You don't have a lot of the... You don't have like wombo combos mm -hmm. because you just these monsters are dependent a lot of times on your opponent until you hit the link force. Right. But you do make a, a series of complex plays just to get these links monsters, get your disaster out and protect uh, your monsters. Uh, in terms of its meta capability, it has amazing matchups against Thunder Dragon and Orcus because essentially they, while they can do a lot of effects, a lot of times they're vulnerable just getting their monsters taken by your disaster, uh, your unchained souls. What about something like Salamon Grade or Salamon Grade, Strikers? Salamon Grade Strike, Striker is actually not bad because Link Summoning away your opponent's monster doesn't count as part of the effect. Right. So they can't float the ray. Um, the real, the only issue with that is that um, it comes down to how you have to hit a certain point when against those decks where you start the, the flow of resources starts reversing. When you start, for example, um, against Salamon Grade, if you grind out to the point where they've burned out all their uh, Balinxes, you have essentially won the game because they can no longer make simpler plays. And since you never destroy them, they can never really get their board online. But you have to grind to that midpoint. Same thing with strikers, where um, you have to grind to a certain point where eventually they will they are running out of their uh, limited resources while you can keep going. And getting to that point can be difficult at times if your opponent opens really strong, but at uh, going first, you end up being able to hit that point really easily, especially if you start seeing the dark spirits um, early on. So moving forward, what do you think you'd place us? You know, in terms of tier, right? Tier status. Tier status. Uh, until we get, I guess, the next line of support, where we get, um, I would put this at a tier uh, two to one point five. It really? doesn't. It, it definitely can do. It definitely can play a w really well, but it is still a trap deck. Right. That uh, that has combos that can be stopped. So at times, it, I would say it doesn't have the free trap range capability as something like. Uh, sub terror so that's always a thing but ultimately i think it's a tier 2 to 1.5 deck just because of the fact that it is it is a it has pretty much hard counters to all the meta decks at the moment right uh, do you think it's something that someone can just pick up and play or is it something that requires sitting down and learning you definitely have to learn the deck a lot of this deck is resource management you have to know when you how to get these cards um how to uh, when to drop uh, some of this back from the graveyard by your spirits you have to know when to pop the right cards because knowing it's knowing what your opponent uh knowing your opponent's break point in their combo is essential to actually being able to disrupt them effectively if you pop off too early and link away the wrong monster your opponent fixes their uh fixes their combo and you're still behind if your opponent if you go too late in the combo it's too late to do anything anyway because it's gonna get stopped knowing that is part of the problem and it takes a lot of time i guess um playing other decks to know how to stop them likewise this deck is just not cheap if you're a budget player, you can't pick. You, I wouldn't. You, it'd be hard to pick this up considering this. They're eighty percent of the uh, eighty percent of the main deck cards are secret, and right. so is the extra deck. So having just getting those cards are just way too hard. Moving forward, do you think pure is the way to go, or do you think it's something that requires perhaps an engine with one of the other existing archetypes? I think moving forward, in just in general, it's um, it, it's just better to be pure. Uh, going back to what I said about bricking, uh. I saw people play their, the True Draco engine, where the idea was to use Diagram to pop your uh, to pop your monsters to get the special summon. And I thought, I tried that build first, and I quickly realized you you pretty much only wanted to resolve that Diagram pop once. Because once you got your Dark Spirit out and you started making your plays, the Diagram, you didn't ever want to pull more of them out of your deck unless you had to. But more importantly, it became an issue where it, they didn't mesh the same way. You could search your, um, you could search all these cool uh, True Draco spell and trap cards, but they wouldn't do anything unless you were popping them with uh, your own cards. But that was just inherently neck. You weren't summoning a monster like um, Dinoster or like Dino uh, Dino Fist or whatever his name is, because ultimately those monsters didn't also mesh with any of your uh, Unchained monsters. Right. And you couldn't tribute any of your Unchained spell and trap cards because, like always, they weren't continuous spell and trap cards. So it ended up becoming it was pretty much just diagram to the one starter play and that it wasn't necessary when your deck can just play on its opponent's turn or grind it out likewise the artifact engine was the same issue where the artifact engine was cute but only it pretty much was a one-way package where you had the unchained popping things and otherwise so yeah all right ultimately peers better well
there you have it guys um, pure unchained here first on the channel if you guys would like to see a combo video or even some test hands smash that like button and we can see what Tony can do well thank you for your time man All right take care keep invoking